For more than three centuries, Worcester's newspapers have played an important role in the recording of its day-to-day -day history. In this series, we'll take a deep dive into the archives to uncover some of the fascinating stories documented within, in Worcester's printed past. Reports are current that a veritable ghost is in the habit of making nightly peregrinations in the Droitwich, Ombersley and Northwick roads. Springheel Jack is the name that has been given to the perturbed spirit, in consequence of the facility with which he, or it, can leap over gates and hedges and confront the astonished pedestrian. Springheel Jack was a figure of English folklore, whose rumoured presence terrified the residents of Victorian England. First claimed to have been sighted in 1837, the creature was described variously as having clawed hands with eyes of fire, of taking the form of a tall and slender gentleman, or as resembling the devil himself. One element of consistency around the legend is that he reportedly had the ability to make huge leaps into the air to better surprise his intended victims. It appears that the ghost is especially fond of frightening women and children, as the matter-of-fact and non-superstitious portion of the inhabitants of the neighbourhood in question suspect that the ghost is personated by some mischievous or idiotic spirit clothed in flesh, it is not at all unlikely that we shall before long hear of his ghost ship being laid by the application of a stout cudgel. Although the author of the article has made it clear that most people are not taken in by such superstitions, he hadn't accounted for everyone in the neighbourhood. Sir, on reading your issue of the 20th instant, my attention was drawn to a paragraph headed The Claims Ghost, on which I beg the favour of your insertion of these few lines on the subject. There appears to have been a rumour about a ghost, or what has otherwise been termed Spring-Heeled Jack, to the terror of the Barborn Timids, of which I had not heard or seen until Tuesday, the 19th instant when, within a few hundred yards of my residence, I was attacked by a man, not a ghost, who rushed upon and seized me, and with cries of, I've got him now, it's spring Jack, and I'll stick to him now, knocked me down, kicked me, and otherwise ill-used me. I resisted the attack, and cried out for help, and probably luckily for me, help arrived, or no doubt I should have had a much more severe encounter with the said ghost. I ultimately succeeded in finding out who my assailant was, a man named Francis Dyke, with a view to bring him to justice and should have done so, but for his appeal to me not to do so. I, however, allow him to escape the punishment he richly deserves, and accept an apology on his paying ten shillings and sixpence for his wrong, my injury to the Worcester Infirmary. Apologising for trespassing so much on your valuable space, I am, Mr. Editor, your obedient servant, Mr. W. H. Hewlett, Droitwich Road, Worcester. Clearly the rumours circulating the northern reaches of the city were having some form of profound effect on its citizens. The same issue which featured Mr. Hewlett's regaling of his encounter published news that the suspected spectre had moved on. The publicity recently given to the mysterious nocturnal perambulations of a ghost in the Ombersley, Droitwich and Northwick roads to the great dread of many peaceable pedestrians, and especially of women and children, seems to have had the desired effect of entirely dispelling the spiritual manifestation, or at all events, inducing him to betake himself to fresh fields and pastures new. The report now goes that the apparition is favouring the salubrious neighbourhood of Rainbow Hill with his nightly presence, 